I'm waiting for an amazing sounding headphone amplifier that wouldn't pass the psychological barrier of 1000 US dollars or 1000 euros for a very long time. Syncer SA1 was very close to that title, closely followed by tapping A90, A90D, A70 Pro, but still all of those weren't really up there with the very best solid state headphone amplifiers. The sound of headphone amplifiers is directly correlated with internal components with the working principle. If those components are not of high quality, then of course the sound will be exactly like that. However, when you carefully pick every single component to work in harmony with your source, then the end result should put butterflies in your stomach. I'm happy to report that four years later, I finally found that amplifier that is called Aun S17 Pro, which goes for 699 in the US and 729 euros here locally. So let's check what's so special about it. A couple of days ago, I reviewed their S9C, which is a really nice DAC and headphone amplifier, which has a similar price point with S17 Pro. The only difference is this one is just a preamplifier and headphone amplifier that Aun Audio further refined, adding more power and R2R volume control, additional fully discrete components and a class A working mode, which further improve the sound, making it flow more naturally. Build quality wise, S17 Pro is pretty much identical to S9C and to all the past devices like S6 Pro, S7 Pro, having the same CNC machined aluminum case uh, carved from a single block of aluminum with two plates attached to its front and back. Compared to S9C, this one is a little hotter, especially when used in Class A working mode. And since it gets uh, the same short rubber fit, may I suggest using a four ESOPAX Mini, which will elevate it from the ground and also improve uh, heat dissipation in the long run. As for controls, we have a four pin XLR, a 4.4 millimeter balanced output and a regular quarter inch headphone jack. We have a big colorful display exactly in the middle and of course a massive uh, volume knob to its right which is actually an art war volume control which I like very much. On its back we have a pair of RCA and XLR analog inputs and a mirrored symmetry of analog outputs since it can work as a dedicated preamplifier in a stereo setup. Under its hood is where all the magic is happening. The input stage is based on two JFET transistors per channel. We have four channels right here, and those are trying to mimic the sound of tube amplifiers, sounding organic, quite sweet, quite natural. The output stage, on the other hand, are based on uh, four transistors per channel, so 16 transistors in total. We also have hundreds of diodes and resistors, and all of those are forming a fully discrete and fully balanced headphone amplifier circuit, which is providing up to 7.5 watts of power in 32 ohms. Mind you, not in 16 ohms, how many headphone makers are trying to trick you. And this one also provides almost one watt of power in 300 ohms, which is honestly a lot of power. It boots in class A B operation, but uh, with a touch of a button, you can uh, change to full class A operation, which uh, will be doubling the current output to your headphones. Its output transistors will be heating up uh, quite a lot versus class A, B, so uh, this one will get hotter. And if it reaches 69 degrees Celsius, it will automatically switch to class A, B operation. However, in my office, which is not a very well ventilated area, it never reached those 69 degrees Celsius. If that is the case, uh, just leave more space all around it and maybe use some uh, ESOPAX Mini for a better ventilation and it will never reach those 69 degrees. Those fully discrete input and output stages are drawing power from a custom 50 watt linear transformer 
which is then regulated and filtered several times. And that is a good thing because I really like the sound of linear transformers and not so much of uh, switching mode power supplies. And lastly, it has an R2R volume control uh, consisting of four ladders, uh, which are providing you about, uh, not about actually 64 uh, steps of volume, which should be enough even for ultra sensitive IMs or ultra sensitive headphones. So in the end, I do believe this is one of the best volume implementations that you can have at any price. And overall, I do believe S17 Pro is following every rule a solid state head amplifier should have. A linear transformer, check a fully discrete and fully balanced amplifier stage, check R to R volume control, check class A working mode, check, and lastly, abundant power delivery for the most demanding loads. Again, it's a check. The first thing that you should know about uh, fully discrete amplifiers that use linear transformers is that you would need at least several days for burning until it will give you maximum performance. Even that r to r volume control needs at least two days until those resistors are entering its uh, optimum parameters. I have this unit for more than a month, actually about two months. And I was still skipping this video, not because I didn't want to review this one. I wanted very much, but once I was powering this one and uh, music started playing, I didn't want to write anything down. I didn't care about the dynamics, transients, sound stage, resolution. That is not really important with S17 Pro. I just want to listen to a lot of music and be carried away. Actually, all my videos that I released in the last two months or so were edited on this one. Uh, why? Because my voice <laughs> sounds uh, bolder in a way and it's almost pulseless on other amplifiers. Also, when listening to music, everything is just uh, pouring naturally like a mountain spring. Everything feels very powerful, especially in the bass. Uh, the mid-range, it's sweet, it's organic, it's natural sounding, and the treble, it's completely brightness-free. So this is mostly like an effortless, very easygoing, uh, natural and sweet sounding amplifier uh, that you can use for hours and hours without any kind of listening fatigue. I went and listened to some aggressive stuff, uh, electronica music, I listened to all kinds of things. Uh, even underground music, which should tire you down with something like half a Vara, but um, that never happened with the S17 Pro. It does justice to music, and although it's also a technical sounding headphone amplifier that will unearth all those small details happening behind your tracks, I believe its superpowers are the natural flow of the music, powerful dynamics, especially in that class A working mode. I I remember reviewing that uh, Syncer SA1 and it left a profound impression on me because it was quite natural, quite organic sounding, and it had the right price point. The only thing it didn't have uh, was uh, power, control, and uh, powerful dynamics. It wasn't able to drive the heaviest loads. This one feels like a natural successor to SA1, with the exception that we get a lot more power, a lot more control, more powerful dynamics, and of course, a much more fun sound signature. My flagship headphone amplifiers are considerably more expensive than this one, and it's a little bit uncomfortable to me recommending you such expensive amplifiers. That I will never do. I'm not that kind of snob that believes only in super high-end electronics. I know that you can get some amazing sounding stuff on the chip, and I do believe uh, S17 Pro is that kind of unit. My flagship solid state headphone amplifier is uh, Inlium AM23R, which has very similar traits to this one. So it's very organic, it flows, it's very natural. You are not thinking about um, you know, detailed retrieval, transparency, sound stage, dynamics, all those things are not important when listening to the Inlium. You just want to immerse yourself into the music. This one is very much the same, so you just go with the flow, you want to listen to more stuff. And um, this is what is impressive about S17 Pro. Let's talk about power as this is a very important topic. S17 Pro offers you a stepped volume control with 64 steps. Now imagine that with all my headphones except for one, I could reach maximum a volume of 
30 out of 64. Even with the Sennheiser HD 800S, I could barely reach that volume. So again, I had more than half of power remaining on tap for some crazy wild dynamic swings. When I wanted to rock really hard, I could reach maybe 32, maybe 33. So again, I had plenty of power. All this time, S17 Pro didn't flinch a single bit. So it was exactly as effortless, exactly as dynamic, punchy, groovy. Uh, the bass had long decays and just uh, long sustains. Exactly how a proper uh, solid state head on amplifier should sound. How about the Hyphman Susvara? Well, S9C was already nicely driving the Susvara, although not at maximum potential. This one provides you more power and doubles the current output, so the Hyphman Susvara are sounding legendary on this one. It's not exactly on the same level with uh, Inlium Arm 23R, but it's very, very close to that one, and that makes me very happy. Um, Volume-wise, I could reach uh, 50 out of 64, so again, I had plenty of volume remaining on top. When I wanted to really rock hard, that would be about 55, but all this time I never felt that Susvara were losing its charm, you know, losing some bass or dynamics or mid-range. They sounded exactly as I know them to be on some top-class amplifiers. So I'm very happy for this because uh, finally we have an amplifier below one gram that can fully drive the Hyman Susvara. And if you want my highest recommendation below one gram, that would be the S17 Pro. The difference between class A and class AB is not a massive one. And with a pair of IMs or sensitive desktop headphones, there might be not a difference whatsoever. However, with low sensitivity headphones, especially those having a low impedance, there is actually quite a difference. Class A adds a sensation of control, especially with the Hyphman Susvara, and I'm pretty sure the same will happen with DCA Expanse, uh, with Stealth, with Abyss 1266. The music just becomes a river of sounds. The timing is improving actually substantially, and that adds a sensation of rightfulness, of this is how music should sound. Class AB is no slouch and sounds very good, but some of the magic simply goes away. The sound is no longer as tight, it's no longer as controlled, and the flow of the music is no longer as impressive. With easier tasks like uh, Kenerton Valley, like Apos Caspian, like uh, Focal Headphones, uh, there is very little difference or no difference at all, although with Class A the music will flow just a little bit more naturally. There was another change, but that happened mostly with uh, reference recordings, especially when we have some low intensity sounds that are building up to some very high intensity sounds, like a big drum dropping on your head. The sound gets powerful in a microsecond and it doesn't feel as lightning fast via Class AB. Not a major difference, but a clear one, especially when a well put together setup. The transit response and dynamics are impressive on this one, especially in Class A working mode, but you need to be patient as uh, those will show their ugly faces after about 30 minutes of use. Once its internal temperature is no longer going up, the sound will stabilize and you'll get a very consistent thump and oomph in the bass that is not happening when the unit is cold to the touch. All fully discrete amplifiers are having these rates and if you ever owned a fully discrete amplifier then you know about this, so this shouldn't be a surprise. If you listen to East London Street by Hidden Orchestra, there is a um, low intensity rumble in the bass that pulsates and just uh, decays very slowly and very naturally. That particular bass note is short-lived and almost empty on other amplifiers, but right here is beautifully rendered, it's very rounded, it's full-bodied and it pulsates with energy. Dreams by River Silvers has a very similar bass line that is slowly building up and slowly fading away. This slow build up and slow fade away in the bass is usually associated with a really good headphone amplifiers. Think about expensive to super expensive amplifiers. And I'm getting all of this uh, from the S70 Pro that isn't costing as much and yet it can accelerate, sustain and decay a bass note properly. 
In simple terms, its speed and punching abilities are extraordinary. And if you like powerful dynamics, then S17 Pro fits that description very well. The sound stage of an amplifier is directly correlated with its power output, working principle and power supply implementation. This one has a linear power supply. This is a fully discrete and class amplifier having all the power that you can dream of. So I won't gesticulate with my hands too much, but um, this one does its mambo jumbo on acoustic and live music. Even with some electronica tracks, the sounds are trying to escape my ears, the ear caps of my headphones and trying to dance somewhere all around your head. I don't need to close my eyes for the sounds to start appearing somewhere behind my ears or up or below my chin. It does play with my imagination and those are the very first signs that the sound isn't limited, flying off in all directions. The sound stage is not small or medium sized, how I usually describe amplifiers sitting below one grand. This one is bigger sounding than that. I was listening to this track, I don't know how to pronounce those words, and in no time a few shamans started appearing around my office doing some voodoo dances. That air harp and those air instruments sounded so real, that was actually a magical moment for me. I almost reached a nirvana state. Please give it a try, it's an amazing track, it's recorded to the higher standards. Resolution is impressive for this one, but it renders music quite differently compared to, say, a tapping A70 Pro or A90D. This one focuses mostly on the innards of the music, on the core, on uh, the meat on the bone. Uh, something that uh, A70 Pro and uh, A90D are not doing. Those are focusing on the leading edges, on the contour of the notes, on what's on the outside and not what's on the inside. The sound might get a little sharp on A70 Pro and A90D, uh, but uh, here it's fuller bodied and it's more textured. You feel the weight of the notes uh, hitting your eardrums, it's a quite visceral and physical experience, uh, something that is not happening on uh, tapping made amplifiers. On the first listen you'll get tricked that uh, um, this one might lack a small percentage of resolution, but after a close inspection uh, you get all the notes, all the inner details, uh, but those are no longer screaming for your full attention. Most importantly, uh, this one uh, digs deeper, so you have that amazing layering and depth, uh, which uh, those THX, NFCA and PLFC amplifiers do not have. So if you know where to focus, uh, those notes will be waving at you pretty easily. And combine that with an extended and layered sound and you are getting all the skills a well-made amplifier should have. Going into the frequency response, switch it to class A working mode and the bass will score nicer lap times, getting faster and punchier at the same time while controlling nicer all that energy. The bass is actually the biggest highlight of fully discrete amplifiers, uh, getting technical and clean but also uh, textured, punchy, visceral, heavyweight and quite natural sounding. It doesn't go overboard with the bass. This is still a very linear type of bass, but it's a different type of linearity compared to, say, a tapping made amplifier. This is fun linearity that uh, tingles your senses, getting emotional, impersonal in no time. The mid range is again somewhat of a highlight of fully discrete class amplifiers. And if you are coming from op amp based amplifiers, which are flooding the market, especially below one grand, then this one will feel like having a few vacuum tubes inside, sounding sweeter, warmer, more organic, doing justice, proper justice to mid range and to everything that is happening in this region. Actually, if I think about it, this is the best mid range representation that I've heard in four years from solid state amplifiers costing below one grand. It's a powerful statement, but it's all true. This is a legendary sounding mid-range, which can be compared with pricier amplifiers any time of the week. Treble might feel rolled off at first, slightly smoothed out, a little rounded at first, but no, this is how S17 Pro is rendering treble information. Illium Amp 23R has very similar traits, 
It's very clear and adorable, but at the same time, there is nothing of that edginess or brightness. It just sounds right in the treble. And S70 Pro is reminding me a lot about that amplifier, just compelling you to listen to more music, going with the flow. S17 is basically like that. Symbols feel powerful and quite uh, metallic, as they should do, but at the same time, uh, you don't get that nasty ringing in the treble that tells you to turn off your amplifier or maybe you know, switch to another headphone. That is not happening. You can listen to bright tunes on this one. You can listen to bright DAC or bright headphones. That wouldn't be a problem with this one. There is no digitus and no listening fatigue at the same time. In conclusion, if you own a Syncer SM1, a topping A90, A90D, A70 Pro, SMSL SH9, SP400, HO200 or an AUN S7 Pro, then S70 Pro feels like a natural successor, giving you so much more than just power alone. After it gets warm, the sound will get emotional, uh, close and personal, but without uh, crashing down on you. It's both engaging, punchy and also calm, like a bomb. It will drive your entire headphone collection with a plump and it will never raise the noise to dangerous levels with IMs. Simply put, this is the very best solid state headphone amplifier that I have ever tried below one grand. Subscribe.